Hello everybody and welcome back to Battletech where we are nearing the end of this but we've still got quite a few flashpoints to do so let's go ahead and get started heading to another flashpoint. So we've got three available in Davian space over here and we've got one over here. This one has 123 days left on it and would take us 37 days to get there. This one has 153 days left on it, 101 and 82. So I think we'll just do this in order. We've got plenty of time to get to them. This is another light requirement, but uh, we'll we'll go ahead and travel there. However, before we really get started on letting the timer tick, I do want to check on a couple of things. First off, can we train our pilots? Many of our pilots, of course, are now maxed, but that's fine. I think we already did this, but I can't remember. This is a, a new session, so I just figured I'd double check, but it looks like we're good. And then, of course, this Banshee is in progress, so that is completely fine. I think we're ready to go. New flashpoint added in Brockway system. Okay. Darius assembles the staff for an emergency meeting. Train has contracted a contagious, potentially fatal disease, likely from a recent shore leave excursion. We need to isolate an entire med bay until she recovers. I've also notified the local authorities. They believe we've encountered a local strain of periphery pox and can provide targeted drugs for 80,000. A steep price, but probably necessary. Seymour volunteers. I know somebody at a pharmaceutical research lab. They've been looking for somebody to test their new antivirals on. It'd be 200,000 C-bills to get in on the ground floor, but it would give us permanent access to the drug. Really? We'll do it. I don't want to pay for additional medication. <laughs> Train is quarantined in one of the med bays and the antivirals administered. She is soon joined by Vamp. Fearful rumors of the virus are countered by the story of Sumire's acquisition of the antivirals. While these two mech warriors will be out of commission for a while, the dangerous time passes quickly, leaving them exhausted, but recovering. Train is no longer in high spirits. Train will be unavailable for 30 days, vamp for 14, minus 3 medical point penalty for 30 days, we lose 200,000 ski bills, morale decreased by 1. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to have vamp one day after we get back, but train is going to be out for this flashpoint then, for sure. That's okay. We've got plenty of backups. Train is maxed now anyway, isn't she? Or done, is she just close to it? Let's see here. She's just close. Okay. Well, we'll continue. We'll have Vamp ready to go. And of course, we are going to have to uh, run light mechs anyway. At least for some of the missions. I'm not sure for how many, but uh, for some. Okay. So here we are at our destination. Well, as soon as we uh, finish traveling from the jump ship. There we go. Excellent. So we're going to just go ahead and get this started, I think. Although I do want to take one day to make sure that Vamp is here. Does this have consecutive deployment? No, it does not. Okay. We will begin this. Welcome to Shonovan, Commander. I'm sorry to have dragged you out to such a dreadful system, but necessity compels. As you may know, we're standing in territory that once belonged to the Capellan Confederation. Unfortunately, a sizable minority of Shonovan's population would like nothing better than a return to Liao rule. Of course they would. You annexed their damned planet. We saved them from a government that kept them in a state of abject poverty. House Davian brought the system of the, the people of this system wealth, culture, and opportunity, and they've repaid our magnanimity with vitriol. It's exhausting dealing with these people. Sometimes I wish that we could just pack up and leave, but that wouldn't be fair to the majority, who see our leadership for the gift it is. How generous of you. As you can see, the political situation in this system is 
precarious. The ongoing management of Shonovan is like a never-ending Hearts and Minds campaign. If our responses are too weak, we lose the confidence of the majority. Too strong, and we run the risk of radicalizing the minority and spurring them to violence. Thus, when a rebel group must be curtailed, a certain degree of deftness is required. And you want us to deftly curtail one of these groups. Only its leadership. Tiasa Navaha Norkis and her husband, Mattis Bishop Crenshaw. They're Liao Zealots, veterans of the Prefectorate Guard. Together, they oversee Shonovan's most dangerous pro-Liao political organization, the Emerald Dawn. From a public re relations standpoint, an act on the Dawn itself would be disastrous. They have too many supporters in the community at large, but if Norcus and Crenshaw could be removed from their power, swiftly, quietly, with a low tonnage lance to avoid drawing attention, then the Emerald Dawn could be neutralized. In time, who knows, perhaps it could even become an asset. Sounds like a tall order. From what you just told us, this Emerald Dawn is full of people who hate you. Ordering the deaths of their leaders isn't going to change that. No, but the installation of a more sympathetic leadership might. Of course, it'll have to happen in the right way. The performative aspects of this operation will need to be on point. Pub public relations doesn't factor into your job description, so I'll spare you the details of our outreach plan. But you need to know that when the job is done, I'll be making a public appearance at the combat site. Therefore, it's absolutely imperative that your part of the operation go off without a hitch. If you're looking for a guarantee, I can't give it to you. Warfare is inherently unpredictable. I'm counting on you to compensate for that. On the orders of the royal family, my dropship is loaded and ready to fly. Camera crews are already in position to live broadcast my arrival. If I had any choice in the matter, I wouldn't be doing this. Left to my own devices, I'd leave Shonovan without a backward glance. But as I said before, necessity compels. It's as true for the nobility as it is for anyone else. Good hunting, Commander. Fight with vigilance and skill, and above all, eliminate Crenshaw and Norcus. I cannot stress this firmly enough. They must be dead before I descend on the combat site. I'll keep in touch to the best of my ability. Cunningham out. I guess we're carrying out assassinations in service of House Davian's propaganda machine now. Can't say I'm a big fan of the idea. I mean, say what you will about mercenary work. At least it's honest. That's right, it is. And that's why we're going to play this like we always do. We accomplish the mission, satisfy our client, and get paid. If Lady Cunningham wants to stage a PR exercise in the rubble afterward, that's her business. Back to your stations, everyone. Let's get this job done. Okay, so I'm assuming this is going to be an assassination mission. Once it loads, there we go. Assassinate in an urban environment. Okay. And max of 55 tons, so we are going to be bringing our Light Lance. We're going to bring our pair of Jenners, of course, our Panther, and our Raven. And instead of Train, we are going to need to bring Thumper. That should be fine. His job is mostly to stand there with an ECM, <laughs> so it'll be... Yeah, we're fine. We're fine, Darius. We may want to invest in a medium mech or two, though, like a hunchback in place of the panther, probably. Dual Jenners, a hunchback. That would be pretty potent. But anyway, we need to eliminate Mattis Bishop Crenshaw. He and his retinue are en route to a meeting with CN Triumphant, a satellite organization of the Emerald Dawn. Intercept Crenshaw's battle mech, destroy it, and contact my dropship to confirm the kill. That's pretty straightforward, Alpha Lance. Keep your eyes open all the same. Yes, indeed. Let's go. Command interface initiated. I've been picking up sporadic hits on the Leopard sensors, Commander. Lady Cunningham was right. Crenshaw is definitely moving through this AO. He's got bodyguards, but there's too much interference for me to get a read on what they're piloting. I'd recommend exercising caution when you make your approach. Incoming transmission. 
I don't know who you assholes are, but if you're here on Cunningham's dime, I'd recommend giving my lance a wide berth. If you step within our sensor range, I won't hesitate to mow you down. Cocky son of a bitch, isn't he? Let's see where that gets him. Go to it, boss. I'll be cheering you on from here. Sweet place. Well, really sweet. we've got... We've got the raven, so the odds of us being in their sensor range are low. They're right here. Okay. There's Outriders and a Vanguard. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Time to earn our money. Okay. Ah. A 35 tonner. I'm going to place a Jenner right here. Behind this building. A Jenner up over here in the cover. Coordinates received. And the Panther just as far forward as we possibly can. We're entirely within our ECM. Keep your eyes peeled, Commander. This looks like an ideal place for an ambush. I agree. And we're gonna let them spring their trap. I mean, we're cloaked, so... I don't even know if they know we're here. That was a very long time to start moving this fire starter. Well, the fire starter definitely knows we're here. The 20 tonner and a 25 and a 35 tonner. Okay. The commando, com 1B. Both of them are entrenched. Okay. I think we target the fire starter first. So, I'm going to bring this Jenner right up over here. There we go. We just revealed ourselves. We are slightly outside of the ECM. We will fix that in a bit. We're going for a head hit. Actually, no. We should probably go for CT, right? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. That was pretty decent. They have a medium out there. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So let's get this Jenner right up over here. And we are going to fire on the fire starter again. I want to bring that fire starter down, ideally. I'm going to put the, the panther right up over here. And we are definitely in stray shot territory, but that is in theory what the ECM is for. Oof. Certainly not ideal on these hits. Now that hit something good. Okay, Thumper, I want you to kind of stand behind this building. Right there. And you're just going to brace. Okay, and we are now cloaked. Commando is going to move forward and just get inside our ECM. Okay. Hey there. Gonna precision strike this fire starter in the CT with the Panther. All that was not an ideal spread in the slightest. Nothing hit the CT there. Yes, boss. Please finish him. Giving them everything I've got. Twenty-seven HP left there. Taken a critical hit. Okay. You can just stay put. You're in cover. They're a ways away. They've already moved this guy. We're going to multi-target this fire starter. He has 27, so we have to hit the CT with two medium lasers. I'm going to fire three at him, and then I'm going to fire the other medium laser at this commando just to remove an evasive pip. Engaging. Okay, fire starter is down. And we got that evasive pip removed. 
Excellent. Now, the commando is currently within the ECM. So this isn't good for us. To that end, I'm going to bring the Raven up, and we're just going to melee this guy. Acknowledged. Boop. Get that arm. Okay. That's the arm with the large laser. Which we just crit. Solid connection on that one. Okay. Now there are other mechs that we don't see yet. There's a 20 tonner there. If we get LOS on him, we might be able to snipe him with the Panther. Wow. Now that was some luck. Literally nothing hit the Raven. Okay. A medium running dual auto cannons. That's got to be a blackjack out there. That's fine. I think. What's up, boss? I'm going to utilize the Panther here. Copy that. Precision strike the commando. How much in that CT? 80? Oh yeah, we can actually just straight up kill this guy. If we hit two large lasers in the CT. Roger. Now that did reserve him back. So that means that we're going to get another chance at him. We're going to use the raven and melee him again. Engaging. Okay. Very nice. Enemy down. Wait, the Raven can melee and cloak? That's fascinating. The Panther was uncloaked because we fired. Barely a hit, Commander. But you can melee and still be cloaked by the ECM? That is news to me. And also very important. So I'm going to take the Jenner over here. And we've got the morale for a called shot. We're going to called shot this locust right in the CT. And we're going to go for the kill shot. And that's a kill shot. Fantastic. That Jenner is going to skyline himself They've got a sensor and sensor lock our Raven. Standing by. It's an interesting move. Not sure I'd say it's a good move, but it's certainly an interesting move. Now we're going to be a little out of range of this guy. I'm actually only going to fire two medium lasers to remove this evasive pip. There we go. And then we'll otherwise sink some heat. I was hoping for a hit, but it did not happen. So Crenshaw is going to be moving very soon, and I'm assuming he's going to fire on the Panther, although they may not have LOS on the Panther here. Okay, that's fine. The Jenner can take that kind of beating. No concerns whatsoever. So I'm going to take the Panther... Off over here. Move into position. And we are going to precision strike this Jenner. And I think we just go for CT hits. If we hit all in the CT, that's 105, we can actually one-shot this Jenner. The odds are a bit low that we actually hit all three in the CT, but we can see. And yeah, it didn't happen. That's a leg destruction, though. Yeah, I'll take it. That gives us a free called shot on every other mech. Okay. So now I'm going to move our Jenners a little bit forward here. And yeah, we're going to remove the ECM. This is acceptable. And we can one-shot this guy with either Jenner if we get good hits in the CT. We did not. Good. 
Not as good as it could have been. Okay, we've got a 20-tonner coming in over there. So we need to finish this guy off. 55% hit odds? That's not great. But that's the closest we can get. That's 90% hit odds there, actually. On the building. 55% on the Jenner. Okay, we'll take those odds, I guess. All we need to do is hit with three. And we did. Perfect. Scratch one Emerald Dawn Combat Lance. Indeed. And now, the Vanguard is approaching. We this see two 20 tonners, and that's fine. Okay. Yes, Commander. I'm going to go ahead and put the Raven right here. Just so that we have better ECM coverage. Oh, these are all 20 tonners. Okay. That Locust is going to die real quick. However, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a slightly early cut in here. This makes sense to cut here, because then we can finish off these guys and deal with the aftermath in the next episode. And I also am recording this the day it goes live, so I want to make sure that the file size is a little smaller so that I can get it uploaded in time. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here, and I will see you all next time. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. I will see you all when we finish this mission.